Now, when it comes to career goals, our next guest, uh, well, he knows how to pack a punch. Mm, to take us inside the world of MMA fighting, we please welcome local loud lad, Kieran, the undefeated Clark. How are you, Good Kieran? to see you, Kieran. Good, Good, Good thanks for having me I feel on. like doing that in a booming voice as I'm actually... Kieran! Kieran! Exactly. The undefeated <laughs> Clark! There you go. That's the intro That's not bad, that's not bad. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> Just to let you know. Go and the reason it rings in my ears is because my husband is a massive fan of MMA. It's on, like, records on the Saturday night, watches it on Sunday morning. It has just really taken off over the last decade. But tell us how you got started in it. Yeah, so obviously before the, the rise of Conor McGregor, of course, that's why it's so big now, uh, worldwide. But myself and my brother were always interested in martial arts growing up and combat sports. And, you know, I think we kind of joined to, to start getting the better of each other, you know? Yeah. And uh, so we, uh, we joined, obviously, uh, MMA gym then nearly 12 years ago now so and just uh, joined it just for the love of it really and then here I am now professional and fighting right. in sold out arenas you know it's brilliant yeah. it, is, it is it is yours is a great story but, but many people credit um, their sport during their teenage years for giving them focus mm. you know um, MMA needs a lot of discipline uh, oh. and has it done that for you has it been that for you oh big time yeah I mean you know when you're growing up you, you don't know who you are really and you're kind of you're so, I suppose you're naive and you're kind of certain type of groups of people and to be accepted and, you know, mm -hmm. looking for attention. And then I was no, no different, you know. Um, you're trying to find who you are, not focused, don't know what you want to do. Of course, who want, knows what they want to do at that yeah. age. But, yeah. And then I found a sport and then, you know, my mother was dragging me out of bed to go to school and then I was up before school going for runs then, you know. Wow. So it was just such a, a complete change, you know. It was, uh, and as you said, the discipline involved, it's... it's um, it's just, it's full on. It's all the way in or all the way, all the way out, you know? So that was the big change for me really then, you know? Uh, you started off uh, having fights in GA clubs to maybe a couple of hundred people onto the three arena. <laughs> yeah, what yeah, is yeah. it like fighting in the three arena? Can you remember your first experience there? Yeah, well, as you said, fighting in the GA halls, I think I'm bringing the GA halls with me now up to the middle. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's unreal. But on my first experience, I was... I was my first professional fight yeah. uh, for Bellator and in the three arena sold out. And I ended up being a swing bed at night, long story short. Ended up fighting at five past 12 at night. No. I'd warmed up about three or four times and anyway, won the fight anyway, thank God. And uh, yeah. Oh, we end up getting locked out and everything. Uh, locked in the tree. We had to hop the gate over. They were literally oh, the turn store, off the, the lights. Oh, they, they were in <laughs> sweeping. They were, they were in sweeping. So, so did, did you know you were going on at midnight? I knew I was going on at midnight and maybe half an hour before that. You know, I, I, they were, it's a swing boat, so they're trying to slot you in. What's a swing about? It's, it's a swing boat, kind of like, because of the televised cards, yeah. they, they had so many fights on that night, they're trying to fit you in when they can. Yeah. So I was... What does that do to your brain? Oh, it was very tough for me, professional debut, and yeah. you know, yeah. it means so much, and then you don't know when you're on, you're warming up at seven o'clock, at eight o'clock, you just don't know oh, when. What? Yeah, you're, you're, yeah you're, you're ready to go, like, you know, you have to be ready at a, at a moment's notice, yeah. you know, so, but look, I'm uh, fast and I'm on the main cards now and everything, yeah. so I worked Brilliant. out, you know, so. Um, and, like, obviously, you've, you've got the drive, you've got the discipline, but you've also got John Kavanagh in your corner. Uh, tell us, what is he like, you know, in terms of the influence, the impact he has on a career like yours? Oh, John, like, I think I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for John. The opportunities he's given me, and I always feel I was at the forefront of his mind when it came to opportunities, sponsors, and, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he always gave me his best hand. And as far as a coach, like, John's, you know... I love his coaching style. He's not breathing down your, ne down your neck. Maybe because he doesn't have to with me. He knows I'm disciplined mm -hmm. and always training. But um, he's so clear and concise in the corner. When you have 10,000 people yeah. there, you know, and you don't need anyone trying to hype you up or big you up. He just gives you the instruction, I suppose. And uh, yeah, it's, I have full trust in John. And um, I always did. And it's great to have him there for me, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you mentioned the corner. John in the corner. Your brother's in the corner as well. Yeah, of course, yeah. My brother Daryl um, mentioned he is there. We were born the same day, two years apart. So That's we're mad. Always, yeah, crazy, yeah. So we're always very close growing up and he done the sport up until he um, yeah, he took a step back in competition and um, now he's always in my corner. He takes the days off work and makes sure he's there for me yeah. and, and he's in the corner as well. And and uh, I always hear him as well. So it's, uh, it's great, you know, it's great. <laughs> you listen yeah. to what he has to say. Can I just ask, when you were kids growing up, sharing the same birthday, yeah, meant, you have to share the same birthday cake. Did one want chocolate and one wanted Victoria oh, we were we, Now, in fairness, we, we agreed, we agreed uh, on the, what we wanted in the cake, but <laughs> so we, we, uh, we shared the same room up until not long ago. And wow. uh, yeah. sure, like, yeah, look, yeah. just very yeah. close over the years. Not and, just brothers, but mates as well. Exactly, literally, literally yeah. best friends, you know, <laughs> so it's great.
Yeah, you mentioned the GAA clubs in Drogheda and the support that you brought to the three arena. They all went with you. Um, that support has been right throughout your career, hasn't it? Oh, literally since the, the pro debut to now, it's so consistent just every time, 300 plus people. I've uh, double deckers coming up and buses and yeah. people and sure of my nanny and everything coming up. And, you know what I mean? <laughs> so the, the full work's coming up and the support is unreal. Like, I mean, locally, the sponsors, everything, down to everyone sponsoring me and everything. So it's, uh, it's unbelievable. It, re it really is. Now, as, as much as the support is there for you and they will want to big you up, if they think you're getting notions about yourself, <laughs> they'll be quick to bring you back down again. Um, because they did that, because you were on the Lewis. Yeah. Like, and I don't mean sitting on the Lewis. Yeah. You were on the Lewis. Yeah, literally, yeah. From sitting on the Lewis, going to training, to being on it, you know. So, um, no, that was unreal. A friend of mine sent me a message and said, oh, you're on the Lewis. And I just thought I'd be... You know, a little picture and the main lads and the yeah. next layer, a big portrait on the side of it. And I couldn't believe it, like, you know, and sure, I just thought it was gas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's still seeing knocking about here now, so oh, it's gas. Joe you know? Carey Bradshaw moment. You mightn't get that <laughs> reference, but the girls at home will. Um, tell us, people will get a bit of an insight into your life with the documentary that's coming out. Yeah, tell that's right. This. Yeah, um, so a friend of mine, Jamie Sherry from Manifest Media, he done a little clip of me uh, last year after me, one of my fights, and, and uh, then he. Um, he said he wanted to tell a story through me, through a documentary, so that's coming out now in December, and uh, we decided to, all the money made for it, go to a local charity, So Sad, it's Save Our Sons and Daughters. Yeah. It's a local charity in Drogheda, and for mental health, so I think it's uh, nice to give back to the town that's supported me so much, and, yeah. and it's, uh, it's for a great cause, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it, it is good of you to do that. Uh, last week, you had a great victory at uh, Bellator 285. Uh, it was also your second time being on the main card, so, it, 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 Bellator features some of, some of the best athletes in the world. So what, what's it like to be a part of the main card? You know? Oh, it's unbelievable. Like, I mean, you had world champions, Olympians, um, all of these who's who the names, you know, yeah. of, of MMA. And I was a part of that, like, you know, and I was able to open the main card. And, um, you know, it's unbelievable to be able on national television, obviously, here. And it's, uh, it's brilliant. And, I mean, sold out three arena. It was the most tickets they sold. It was, it was uh, the best... Bellator event in Ireland yeah. and there's even another one now coming up in, in, in February mm -hmm. and, so, and, uh, so are you going to be there? I'll be there definitely <laughs> I'll, uh, I don't think it can be a Bellator uh, Irish show without me now at this stage so no, uh, no it's always great to fight there and okay. uh, tickets are online now I think available on uh, Ticketmaster so that's what people get might them. know is that you went into that fight carrying an injury <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I'm looking broken at your lovely nose, nose here yeah, and it's actually so, broken <laughs> well it was about three weeks before I I, I I didn't know it was broken, but I knew there was something wrong. I didn't want to find that out. And, yeah. and uh, one or two other injuries that uh, we won't disclose, but <laughs> I uh, made it there in the night in one piece anyway and uh, got the job done. That's the main you thing. Certainly I did. Oh God, and well you, you, you'll be in tip-top shape when February yeah, comes exactly. around. Without doubt, yeah, exactly. Yeah, without a doubt. So uh, look after myself over the Christmas and keep the head down and I'll be ready for uh, February okay, then. Lay yeah. off the mince pies. Well, <laughs> yeah. The, we'll try, we'll try. <laughs> the documentary's called Relentless. Uh, people can stay tuned to your social media channels uh, to see when they can uh, see that. Uh, it's going to be released on the 9th of December and ticket, as you say, for the Bellator uh, event, February 24th, available on Ticketmaster.ie. Taking place in three arena. Congratulations on your success. Thanks very, very much. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having you. me on.